Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look at conductors, insulators, and semiconductors. So let's get started. So we'll start by looking at conductors and how they work in terms of band theory. So it says here that in conductors, for example, metals, the highest occupied band, known as the conduction band, is not completely full, and this allows the electrons to move and therefore conduct. The band below this, known as the valence band, is full, and so does not allow the movement of electrons in it. However, at room temperature, the valence band actually overlaps with the conduction band, as shown below in this picture, and this creates what we call partially filled valence bands, thus contributing to conduction. So we're saying that the energy diagram for a conductor looks like this, where you've got electron energy going up the way here, because the conduction band is at higher energy levels than the valence band, and you'll notice that here we have the two bands overlapping. So this means that our completely filled valence band has actually introduced some new electrons into the conduction band, since they are overlapping. And because the conduction band is not completely full, electrons can move about and conduct in the conduction band. And remember, if the conduction band is full, that means that no electrons can move, because there's no space for them to move in that band. Next we have insulators, and it says that in an insulator, the highest occupied band, known as the valence band, is full. The first empty band above the valence band is the conduction band. So the highest occupied band is the lowest energy level band known as the valence band because there's no electrons in the conduction band to conduct and that means no conduction can take place in an insulator. So it says that for an insulator the gap between the valence band and the conduction band is large as shown below in our energy diagram and at room temperature there is not enough energy available to move electrons from the valence band into the conduction band where they would be able to contribute to conduction. There is therefore no electrical conduction in an insulator. So we're explaining how an insulator works in terms of band theory, and here's the energy diagram for an insulator. So we have the valence band and conduction band separated by a large gap. And this means that the electrons in the valence band will never be able to get enough energy to move across the band gap into the conduction band which means that the valence band is always going to stay full and the conduction band is always going to stay empty. So that means there's no electrons in this band to move about and conduct, so no conduction takes place in an insulator. Lastly, we'll look at how a semiconductor works in terms of band theory. So it says that in a semiconductor, the gap between the valence band and conduction band is small, as shown below in the diagram here, and at room temperature, there's sufficient energy available to move some electrons from the valence band into the conduction band, allowing some conduction to take place. This also leaves behind things that we call holes in the valence band, which allows further conduction to take place. These holes can be thought of as positive charges that can move, and holes are actually just the absence of an electron. And we say that an increase in temperature increases the conductivity of a semiconductor. So if you increase the temperature of a material, the ability of that material to conduct increases. And here's our energy diagram for a semiconductor. So unlike an insulator which has a large band gap, we've now got a small band gap between the valence band and the conduction band. And this means that electrons in the valence band, when they're excited, will actually have enough energy to move across the band gap into this higher energy level, the conduction band. And when the electrons are in the conduction band, they can move about and conduct, which means that our semiconductor can be made to conduct when you give these electrons in the valence band sufficient energy. Remember, this could be done by increasing the temperature, as we've said here. It could also be done by exposing a semiconductor to light, and it can also be done by doping. So just to help you visualize the concept of conduction and of holes, I'm going to show you a quick simulation. So if we look at this picture here, imagine you've got a semiconductor material with a small band gap between the conduction band and the valence band. Let's say that some electrons in the valence band have gained sufficient energy to jump up across the band gap to reach the conduction band. Then as shown in the picture here, you can see that when they do that, the electrons are going to leave behind an absence of an electron, which we call a hole. And it's sometimes easier to think about the hole itself as a particle. And that particle, we can say, is the opposite charge to the electron, so that would be positively charged holes. And we can actually think about these holes as moving themselves in the valence band. So if I was to close the switch here, you'll notice how we get movement of electrons now in the conduction band, but we can also get holes going in the opposite direction in the valence band, and that's because they have the opposite charge to the electrons. Going back to the notes now, we're just going to summarize and compare the energy band diagrams side by side. So if we draw electron energy going from bottom to top here, then for a conductor, we saw that the conduction and valence bands will be overlapping. For an insulator, we saw that the conduction band and valence band will be separated by a large band gap. And for a semiconductor, we saw that the conduction band and valence band are separated by a small band gap. 
So you need to be able to identify which is which here by looking at the energy band diagram and also be able to describe what the energy band diagrams look like. It also helps to be able to draw these things, so I would practice sketching these out. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Whoa.